Hey, welcome back to Real Talk with Tate, where we're going to dive into the world of miraculous healings in today's modern times. While a lot of people think that healing only happened back in biblical times, we're going to show you how in today's world, the power of healing is still alive. Each story that we're going to share is going to point back to the Bible, showing us that the God who performed miracles in the Bible is still performing miracles today. The first story that I want to share with you is, I don't know if it's Delia or Delia Knox, who is a worship leader in Alabama. Knox was paralyzed from the waist down for 22 years from a car accident. During a Christian revival meeting in 2010, she was prayed over by a bunch of people and in an incredible moment, she began to feel a sensation in her legs. Slowly, she started to stand up and the next she started to walk, leaving medical professionals amazed. This story reminds me of the paralyzed man that we find in the book of Luke. And this is in Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26, where Jesus forgives his sin. And then he says to him, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. Knox's story really echoes this miracle. as She stood and rose when she has been paralyzed for 22 years. This really shows the healing that God can still do in today's world. We look at this and God's timing might be really different from our own timing. God is always able to perform miracles when we trust in his power and in his presence. Hey, I just want to cut in here for a few minutes and say, hey, can you hit that like button, hit subscribe, and then share this video with a friend. What this is going to do, it's going to continue to push this ministry forward and to allow us to continue to talk about these fun topics. All right, I'll stop talking. Back to the video. I'm going to be talking about a few stories in this video just to show you the miracles that are still performed. In Buenos Aires, in 1996, they were taking communion and the wafer from the communion transformed into the tissue of a human heart. Scientists actually later confirmed that indeed it was the tissue of a heart. It had signs of distress and they were actually not even able to explain it. I recall the Last Supper in Luke 22 verses 19 through 20, where Jesus said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Well, we look at some miracles and God is going to use physical signs to draw it back to his presence for his followers, for his believers. And it draws back a line to the promise that Jesus told his people. This story references the presence of Christ with us as he promised to be even to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Now I want to talk about documented healings in the modern world. There's a story about John Smith's near drowning experience. In 2015, John Smith was actually underwater for 15 minutes. He had no pulse for nearly an hour. Miraculously, after his mother prayed, his pulse was returned and he ended up making a full recovery. Doctors, they couldn't explain it. They couldn't understand it. They didn't know what happened, which is actually the basis for the movie, The Breakthrough. We look at the story of Lazarus in the Bible of his resurrection. And this is in John chapter 11, verses 43 through 44. And Jesus commands, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, who had been dead, comes back to life. We look at this and it reminds us that Jesus has authority over life and over death. I mean, we look at this, God is still the ultimate author of life and he hears the prayers of those who call on him in faith. We have another miracle from Barbara Snyder's healing from multiple sclerosis. Barbara Snyder, she was actually in the final stages of multiple sclerosis. She was miraculously healed after people prayed for her. She stood up from her wheelchair and was healed from the disease that had left her paralyzed. Again, this story really references the man that was paralyzed. And we can even see this, this one in Mark chapter two, verses 11 through 12, where Jesus said, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. And the man, he got up and he walked. I know we just shared this biblical reference, but I think it's so powerful to see that God can still restore, God can still heal, and God can still do physical healings in the modern times. Physical healing can be a powerful testimony, just like it was in Jesus' time as well. This can really lead others to believe in the power of God and the compassion of God. Now, I want to talk about miracles in contemporary Christian communities. And let's talk about a missionary story in Africa. In Mozambique, a missionary witnessed an entire village that was transformed through the power of prayer. 
blind and deaf individuals were healed, reportedly healed. There was witnesses sparking a revival and drawing people closer to God. This story really recalls the healing miracles of Jesus. We look at John chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, and Jesus heals a blind man. It says, where Jesus made mud, placed it on the man's eyes, and told him to wash in the pool of Siloam. The man, he regained his sight, just as these villagers did in Africa. We look at these kind of miracles, and it really shows the compassion and the power that God has for his children, that God has for his people. When we see God working through people today, it's a reminder that his heart for healing, that his heart for redemption hasn't changed. I want to talk about another miracle, healing from terminal cancer in the United States. Paul Wood was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer, and before his surgery even began, he was miraculously healed. As you can imagine, the doctors were confused, they were puzzled, they had to be thinking, what happened? Where did the cancer go? There was no trace of cancer. There was no trace of the tumor. This story mirrors the story of King Hezekiah. And we look at 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 5-6, through 6, where God hears Hezekiah's prayer and adds 15 years to his life. Paul's miraculous healing, just like Hezekiah's, reminds us that God is going to respond to your prayers. It might not always be the way that we think it's going to look. It might not always be the way that we want it to look. But he can answer those prayers even when circumstances seem impossible. God, I love it because he will intervene in ways that will baffle even some of the most knowledgeable people. And it reminds us of God's ultimate sovereignty over our bodies and over our future. Now I want to get into science and faith. Are they at odds? There's doctors that have just seen such a correlation between faith and medicine. Doctors have actually witnessed these recoveries and they're very open to the possibility of divine intervention. There are countless medical journals of unexplained recoveries that they just don't understand how it happens. They actually mark them as spontaneous remission. We look at Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six, and it encourages us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Even in today's world, with all these medical advancements, we're not gonna have all the answers, which will point us back to faith and an ultimate higher power, God. These stories really show us that while science seeks to understand, faith invites us to trust. Those who are listening, you gotta know that these two can coexist, with each of these serving to strengthen our understanding of God's incredible works. If you are hoping for healing, remember that God in the Bible who healed, that God in the Bible who did all these miracles, healed people with leprosy, made the blind see, made the deaf hear, made the lame walk, he can do that for you today. He can still work a miracle in your life today. We might pray for it and we might not get the answers we're seeking. We might pray for it and we might not have it within our timing. Or maybe we pray for it and it doesn't happen the way we want it to. While we don't understand why some people do get healed and some people don't get healed, our role is to trust that he is with us in every situation of our life. Miracles are not confined to the past. Just as Jesus healed people 2,000 years ago, he continues to work through faith today. Faith and science complement each other. Where science is limited, faith provides hope. Hey, I want to say thank you for watching again this episode today. If you are inspired by these stories, leave it in the comments. Say how it encouraged you and keep that faith. Keep praying. Keep trusting God. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But before we wrap up this episode today, I want to pray over you that is listening behind that phone, laptop, TV, whatever it is, to offer a prayer of healing. And yet it may not happen the way that we want it to happen. Still trust God and he will work an incredible outcome. Let's pray. Father, I just pray for the person that's listening behind this screen, that whatever they are going through, whatever circumstances, whatever situation that they are in, that you will heal them from their head to their toe, that you will heal their mind, that you will heal their thoughts, that you will heal them physically. Lord, work a miracle just as you did to the people 2,000 years ago. Work a miracle like you did throughout scriptures. So God, I just pray that the person that is receiving this prayer will not be discouraged, that they will be enlightened, that they will learn to continue to trust you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you again for watching this episode. Hit like, subscribe, share with a friend so others can hear this message as well. All right.